came back to the office of the president as secretary general. This was sometime around, um, after 10 months of social security, I came back as secretary general up to 2006. I, after the election, 2006, uh, with the cabinet reshuffle, I was um, uh, out of government for almost six months. Then I was appointed again as ambassador to UAE from 19, uh, sorry, from 2007 to about 2010. I came back, sorry, just to an interjection, between the period I was out of government and before I was appointed as ambassador, I was chairman Skybank. So I was appointed as ambassador as a contract for two years but I was also allowed to concurrently be the chairman of Skybank. It was just a contract until I came back in 2010. Went back as, uh, after my contract expired, I was, I became again chairman Skybank. Up to around 2011, that was the time I was appointed as planning and economic affairs minister, planning and industrial development minister. But about nine months later, the two ministries, finance and planning, were merged. So I became the finance and economic affairs minister between uh, 2011 up to, yes, 2012, April. April 2012, I was uh, appointed as foreign minister. April, May, June, July, August, I was appointed as, uh, I was redeployed for a week as the Minister of Higher Education, I was relieved of my duties during that time. Since then, I have my, of course, I, I, I went through some uh, legal issues until I was freed. I left the country and I formed my regional um, consulting called MI Investment, focusing mostly on resource mobilization and investment advice. So your last um, sojourn in public office was in 2012, before this latest appointment? Yes, yes. What month in 2012? August. August. So the specific periods during which you served as Secretary General, you t could you go back to the dates? You said 20, 2005 to 2006. Do you have the months when you served as Secretary General? Um, I have the most, but I, I, not, I don't have the office. records. Fair, but, fair yeah. You don't have it. Okay. All right. Now, um, Mr. Njai, you, during these periods when you served in public office, you were signatory to some accounts. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us which accounts you were signatory to? Specifically, it's difficult to remember all the accounts. Uh, because there were various accounts, including project accounts. I cannot remember until I see the data, then I, I should be able to remember. All right, for today, let's, we, let's talk about two accounts, okay. the mobilization account and yeah. the state aircraft account. Were you signatory to these accounts? Yes, ma'am. Can I have the last exhibit from GT Bank? BB7. We'll start, with, uh, we'll start with the state aircraft account, which seems to be the, the earlier account. I'll show you exhibit CB 23A.
Can you confirm your signatory to this account, which is 0920120525? Yes, I can held confirm. Held at the central bank. I can confirm, yes. You were at the time. Huh? You were at the time holding which office? Where Minister I, of Finance? Yes. And Economic Affairs? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jai, why did you become signatory to this account? Um, number one, as my position as the Finance Minister, it was brought to our attention uh, by the Office of the President, the President in particular that um, we are about to receive a grant from Qatar to help purchase the... From the Kingdom of Qatar? From the Kingdom of Qatar to purchase an aircraft because the, that time, at that time, uh, there was a presidential um, visit and during the mission, I think the aircraft developed the gun. At that time, it developed some technical problems and they came back. And after they were given an aircraft to go back, and coming back, I was told by the president that they promised to give us a grant. And this grant must be um, the finance ministry, must be a signatory to the account. And I did not have any objection. The only thing that I stated was um, a, the account opening procedure is that it has to go through the director of treasury. And the secretary general by then also agreed that it has to go through the director of treasury. And that um, that was followed. For me, the normal procedure is if the account is open and the money is wired into the account, we should be informed as a signatory to the account from the central bank to the director of treasury to us. But after signing, I can remember when or how the funds were injected into it. We were not aware. Hmm. Um. If you look at um, the letter from the central bank in CB23A, you have the second letter, which was the request from the Directorate of National Treasury. Uh, is it dated 26 July 2011? You see that letter yeah. from the Directorate of National Treasury. Yeah. Dated no. the 26 July 2011 to address to the second deputy governor central bank. Is that in the package you have? Yeah, it's in the package. But this now, letter the, was the, never copied to us. Okay. The, but this is the letter. Well, you were saying that you insisted that it should be channeled through the, the Directorate of National Treasury. Yes. And I presume this may have been the yes. channeling that yes. you're talking about. Yes. So this letter, which, yes, it doesn't seem on the face of it to have been copied to you, but appears to be the only request for the opening of the account. Yes. Do you have another letter? I, I have seen another? the letter, but we did not have a copy. At that time, it was not copied to us. But you were aware that the Directorate of National Treasury had written for the opening of this account? Yes, I was aware yes. that it was open. Now, yes. this letter was written for the opening of a state aircraft special account. It said the account should be in Dallas and will be used to hold funds meant for the operation and maintenance of state aircraft. Mm -hmm. But um, what I would like to draw your attention to is the response from the central bank, which said an account had been allocated and a number given, and but laid down several co two conditions. That one, there should be a written communication from the Office of the Directorate of um, National Treasury informing the bank, CBG, whether self-accounting status is granted or two, receipt of signed and completed specimen signature forms of authorized signatories. Now, this, this completed specimen signature forms yeah. of yourself and the, and the ex-president were given, but there was no, nothing stated about whether it was being granted self-accounting status. Why was that? Um, maybe there might have been some uh, communication break breakdown because that's the, that's the responsibility of the Directory of Treasury to ensure that the, 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 there is proper, proper procedure to be followed. I see. Once you opened the account, did you follow up to find out whether the proper procedure was followed? No, ma, we did not. You did not. We, uh, because that responsibility is entirely under the Director of Treasury to ensure. 
Yes, but that, then you had agreed to become signatory to an it, account. Yeah, at the policy level you, we do. At the operational level, that's their responsibility. Yes, but a signatory to an account. Yes. Um, that also, I think, came with some responsibility to find out whether the proper procedure was followed. Don't you think so? I don't think so, ma. Because at, at the policy level, yes, we follow up. But at, at the operational level, it's the responsibility of the director of the treasury to ensure that the proper procedures are followed. Mm. Do you think it was within the mandate of the Minister of Finance to be a signatory to an account? Yes, I can say that because um, now the minister is the head of the ministry. And uh, there are circumstances and situations where if a call is made for the ministry to participate, for me at that time I think it was in order for the minister to be in the front line to ensure that the, 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 the account being managed is properly managed at that time because it was a ministerial, it, it was a meeting at the state house and I don't think it was fair for me to pass the buck to my permanent secretary. So I took up the responsibility. Based on what? Based on the based fact that one is, policy, if I may finish my question, based on what policy or what um, rule or guideline could you as Minister when, of Finance be a signatory to an account? Because if it comes to the bilateral, at the level of the grant, loans, whatever, is the Minister of Finance who will be the signatory. So for, for it to be consistent, and as a follow-up, I thought it was proper. And it was one of activity. It was not like a continuation. It was the procurement of a state aircraft. So I thought it was proper at that time for the Minister to be involved. Were well, there other ex occasions when the Minister of Finance was signatory to an account? I, I, I think so. I, I, I have to go back. It's, it's been a while. But yes, wherever I think, I, I think it is the responsibility for the finance minister, because when, when the call is made to the ministry, I think the chief executive should be up there in the front line to make sure you are you're going to take the responsibility. I remember in the mobilization account, I was an I was a signatory. Which came later. We'll come to the mobilization yes, the, the, account. Because Mr. You Mr. Asked, Mr. Jai, what I want to understand, mm -hmm. because um, yes, I do understand that um, the Minister of Finance signs bilateral grants, the agreements that is mm -hmm. that um, uh, for these grants to be given, by, whether they are bilateral or multilateral and so on, and ministers do sign agreements. Mm -hmm. What I find to be quite new was that um, the ministers or the, even the Minister of Finance could actually be signatory to an account, which is an operational matter and not a policy matter, which we will agree, I'm sure. So I just want to understand on what basis you as Minister of Finance, in law, in law or policy, that you or Minister of Finance would be signatory to, to any account. Yeah, um, I can say it could be a discretionary thing because our responsibility as fiscal authority is the mobilization of resources. So at that level, if a situation occurs where the finance minister felt that the permanent sector should be, should, should not have, well, I mean, we, we, I don't have to delegate that. I will be at the policy level, I'm still talking about the policy consistency, that from the grant element, I thought it was proper for me to follow up to ensure that the proper procurement, because you're talking about a state aircraft, I was under the impression that it is normal and fair for me to go through to make sure that I am involved in the whole thing. At the time you thought it would be normal? I thought it was normal. I think but was, why? That is were, why you basing, I, were you basing it on any previous practice at the ministry? Were you basing it on finding that your predecessors were signatories to other accounts? Were you basing it on the financial instructions or any... any no, why, I, why did you think it was normal? In, in, in a situation where a problem occurs and a problem-solving technique, I think you sometimes you will be innovative as long as you are, you are doing it, with the, the, you are following the right procedure. And during this period, I thought that by channeling it through the Directory of Treasury, we are following the normal procedure, and there was nothing wrong for the finance minister to use his discretion to say that 
I will be the signatory just to ensure that the pro pre proper procurement is conducted. I did not say anything wrong with that. Uh, um, what I don't understand, you seem to be treating, um, saying that this was um, an unusual occurrence, but the giving of grants to the to government of the Gambia to any government is routine. You would agree? Yes. There are many grant grants that had previously been given to the government. Were you required as Minister of Finance to also be signatory to these grants before they could be disbursed? Not at the account opening level, but this one was something that the, the President personally requested from the state of Qatar. So that was why I said for them it was like it was they were giving it to him. So that's why I said they did not go through the normal bilateral channel. Otherwise, the, state, the office of the president should not have been involved. So you were saying the aircraft was given to him personally? That was the, that was, well, not personally, to the, to, of course, the, the, the reason why they insisted that it should be in a central bank account, it was not personally given to him, it was given to the state. But the way and the manner in which it was conducted from them, from the state of Qatar, I thought that for them this is what they are doing, and they have never ever directly con consulted, or they were dealing directly with the office of the president. Okay, so it was not mm. personal, it belongs to the state and government of Gambia. But you seem to be treating it as an exceptional situation where you as Minister of Finance felt that you ought to take responsibility. Yeah, once I became why a second, was, once why I was... Why was it different? Let me finish my question. Why was it different? from any other grants far above this sum that we are being given to the Gambia of the, the government of the Gambia. Why should this specific one be treated differently or, or unusually or exceptionally? Because on the normal grant mm -hmm. allocation, the state, the finance minister of the giving state, will write directly to the finance minister of the receiving state. And the normal protocols are followed. But in this case, the, the protocols were not followed. It was from the office of the president dealing with the with the um, with the Emir of Qatar then. So that was why I, I said it was totally different because on the normal protocol and the conventional way of doing things, the finance minister of the giving state will write to the finance minister of the receiving state, and the normal protocol is done: the signing of agreements and everything and opening of the account and disbursement of the funds. But this one was totally different. Because that's why he claimed that he personally requested it and they are going to give it, it to him. But it has to go to a central bank account. That's why I said once it becomes that, it is no more a personal property. It belongs to the state of Gambia. And that is why I don't understand why it wasn't treated as in the usual way grants were treated and why it was necessary for the you as Minister of Finance to become signatory to the account. Even though, as you said, subsequently, you were neither, you did not withdraw any funds or no, consulted in the withdrawal of funds. Yeah. But you did, as Minister of Finance, approve a certain fundamental shift, I think, in the way in which grants should ought to be treated, because this was a grant. This was the money well, that came, not an aircraft. It was no, the money that they No, it was the sent. money for us to procure. Yes. But I don't think there was anything like a fundamental shift. This was a one of occasion where, as I said, it is normal. The normal conventional procedure is for the finance ministry of the giving state to write to the finance ministry of the receiving state. I heard but you, Mr. Njai. I think on you, this, we, okay. please, I heard you clearly, but I'm saying, Yes, it was unusual in terms of our, what you expected. But what was not unusual was that money, at the bottom line was, money was being given to the government yeah. for, for a particular purpose. And there is a process or a procedure for treating such monies. Why was this treated differently is what I'm trying to find out. Because of the giving state, this was the way that they prefer it to be treated. So we just comply. And the giving state wanted you to be signatory to the account? Yes, because they wanted our involvement. That's why they are putting it into the... Into they, the they, they wanted the Minister of Finance to be signatory. They said the Ministry of Finance. Ministry yes, but of the Finance. accounting officer, Mr. Mr. Njai, for the Ministry of Finance is the permanent secretary yes. of the Ministry of Finance. Yeah. 
And of course, the, the paymaster or anybody who should move shift monies is the accountant general. Mm -hmm. um, as a seasoned administrator and, and, and so on, I mean, this is, this is basic. Let me shift to another question. Why was it necessary for the president to be signatory to an account? That was his personal decision. Did you advise him that yes. the, the, as president he should yes. not be signatory yes, to any I did. account? I did. I but did. don't you think that the fact that you as minister were signing an account might have given him the signal that he also could be signatory to an account? After all, he was a political appointee and so were you as minister of finance. No, ma. I, I think the whole idea started from the state house that he's going to be signatory. In fact, among other things, that what that's what also prompted me to be a counter signatory. Because if you have a permanent secretary signing with the president, I thought at that moment. That's why I said it's a problem solving at that Johnson. So you have to be innovative. It was like being treated as his personal, but for me it was not personal. That was why I said we. Oh, because if we could have just opened it directly with the central bank. But I insisted it must go, once it goes through the directorate of treasury, I think that's where, for, for me, that's where I was very comfortable that no matter what happened to the account, the directory of treasury will be in form and they will be the custodian. So you said you advised him? I did, ma. Was it in writing? No, verbal. Okay. And what was his reaction? That he, is his personal request. He's, he was the one who requested it for, so he has the, he has the right to be a signatory to the account. After the account was opened, did you follow up to find out whether the monies were lodged into the account? No, because it is normal. If at all I am a signatory, the giving state, if they are wiring any money, they should copy to, to the Ministry of Finance number, number two, the central bank will also inform the director of treasury, which will automatically inform the ministry. So I just thought there was no need to follow up. If the money is there, we will know. That was but, the impression I had. But as the minister of finance, I'm sure you came to know that the president had acquired an aircraft, which was costing quite a lot of money to maintain. No. You did not know he had acquired an aircraft? Through this, the, through this um, account? You said you didn't know money was lodged. My no. question is, but you did know he had acquired an aircraft. Yes, um, this was way months later that, that, that I, I knew. But it did was... you try to find out how he acquired the aircraft? No, no. For, for me, I was told that it was through his personal contact. So I, I, I just didn't know. Actually, it was off because it took some time that the communication was not coming through. So I saw an aircraft and I was told that the president acquired and I asked, they said it was through his personal contact. So did I, I, I did not make any investigation. You did not try to follow up here, you were, you had agreed to become a signatory to an account with the president. You did not try to find out whether any money came into the account, Mr. No, Mayor? I did not. You, I mean, it's the responsibility of director of treasury to ensure that if the money is in, we will be informed and the giving state when you are wiring the money, you will copy. It's normal to copy to the Ministry of Finance to inform us that the money is in, in the account. So this is the normal way of doing things. So if we're not informed, so we, I mean, we are so busy, we're overwhelmed as Ministry of Finance that those details really, it is normal for them to inform us, not for us to follow up. Because we, we, <laughs> we had so many other priorities to take care of than following an account with this. But um, this was an unusual, occurrence. Yeah. Exceptionally, you had given your name yeah. to an account. Yeah. It seemed to me normal, that logical, that you would like to follow up to find out whether in fact there was any inflow into the account. Did you ever try to close the account or remove your name from the account? No, no, I did not. Okay. I did not. Well, I'm sure you came to know that um, at some point that um, about four million dollars was paid into the account by I, the Kingdom of Qatar. I did not know that until this um, commission started. I wasn't aware. You did not also know that um, 1.5 is it two, 1.5 million dollar um, euro? Actually, it's euro, not dollars. Four million euro. But 1.5 million euro was withdrawn cash. No, I did not know by the office of the president. 
You right. saw, you, wouldn't, you didn't know that he was the, he became the sole person operating the account, signing and removing money from the, receiving money from the account. You did not know that as No, well. because I didn't expect the governor to accept a single signatory. Mr. Jai, um, just in relation to this, because it was all in 2011 and you were still the Minister of Finance. When did you leave as Minister of Finance, by the way? When um, did I? When did you leave as Minister of Finance? April 2012. April 2012. Yeah. See, during his, this period, he not only acquired a Boeing 757, he also acquired luxury coaches and, and, and quite a number of vehicles from Global Trading Group. No, I did not know. You didn't see these this things? This time, mm. we were developing the program for accelerated growth and employment. So we are so much overwhelmed, apart from the traveling. So we are, we are laser focused on this development plan. So that's news to me. I, I did not know. All right. Um, let's move over to the mobilization account. What is this mobilization account? The mobilization account, um, there Sorry, is... Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you have questions on the state aircraft account, or can I move? Okay. Right. Yes. Sorry, what, what is the mobilization account? The mobilization account um, was prompted by the fact that um, it, was the, it's, well, it was the inauguration of the, the presidential inauguration 2012. And uh, there is a budget line item um, called celebration of national events. And the budget line item is under the office of the president. So in occasions like this, there is a national organizing committee chaired by the vice president. We are, we are members, you know, all the um, uh, ministers and uh, permanent secretaries, and, but basically the ministers, and it's chaired by the vice president. What we do as a ministry, we disburse what is in the budget to the office of the president, so they manage it. So what happened was that it was an inauguration, and what we allocated them, and what was what they come up with the budget. In this committee, you have different um, uh, a, a, a organizing committees, media, entertainment, transportation. So when it came to their budgeting, what they budgeted and what we allocated was the difference was huge. So there was a deficit. And as a committee member, we, we, I was asked to provide the additional funds, which we couldn't. So, so you were asked to provide the additional the, funds? The additional funds, because what, what was budgeted... You, know, you added something which I didn't hear. You Excuse added me? some words which I did not hear. No, I said the National Organizing Committee, what uh, we, with the different media, entertainment, transportation, what they budgeted for, and what we allocated in the budget. For us, we were very strict. We said that this is what we budgeted for, and that's what we can allocate. So the National Organizing Committee will meet as a committee and discuss the budgets presented by various committees. And when they presented the budget, there was a huge deficit, and we were asked to come up with the deficit financing. We couldn't. What we advised them was, you can do some environment in order to meet the, the, the whatever you're supposed to do, the, the, the demand from the various committee. There was a suggestion that now, why don't we go and mobilize outside resources so that we will be able to do the normal, the, 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 the inauguration, a very good um, uh, celebration. As finance ministry, we did not object to that. The only thing we said that it cannot be in the central bank. And that prompted the idea of opening a bank account where the impresses given to all these various committee heads will be given to them through a check so that there can be a follow-up number one. Number two, there can be an after-activity audit exercise so that it will all be in one bank account. Because the intention of the committee was also to go and seek private funding from private sector, we did not encourage the committee to go and open an account in a central bank rather than going to a commercial bank. 
So, the, so that's what happened. And as a member, the the, the budget line item is being managed by the Office of the President, that the, that's the SG. I was asked to assist in terms of the scrutinization of the budget that were submitted by different committees, and that's how I became a signatory. So what is the name of this committee again? The, the National main... Organizing Committee, chaired by the Vice President herself, former Vice President. National Organizing Committee, committee. to organize, you said, state... The inauguration, yeah. Just the inauguration. Just the inauguration. The, the difficulty I have, um, Mr. Njai, is that here where, you, you, yes, the, on the face of it, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong, of course, in setting up a national organizing committee. It seems normal. But here we have three ministers opening an account this is operation, it's not policy. Now, by what mandate would ministers of state be signatories to a commercial bank account, even if it's for public purposes? I, I, I find it difficult to really understand or appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is something that has been going on. If the national accounting, if the national has organizing been going on, committee- sorry, since when? I don't know since when, but that's what I, uh, I, I found that the National Organizing Committee, in the past, uh, let, me, let me just give you the, the, the history, in the past. So, so you, are you saying there was an account before this one on, on organizing similar functions? No, no. I, I, my, my recollection was that because when we allocate by then, when we allocate to the Office of the President under the National under the celebration of national e events, the accounts officer in the office of the president will raise a voucher and they will go and cash the check from the central bank and they will be giving cash to all these committee heads who will go and do it as an impress. He will go and make their expenditure and come back. And I think there was this problem of reconciliation retirement of impress and all of those. It, it was very confusing. I think as a result of that, it prompted and the idea of opening an account to make sure that the proper documentation is done. I, I understand. I understand. But I had my understanding is that, um, you know, as ministers, and I don't think it's just an understanding, it's actually the, the um, governance structure that we have. Ministers are policy making. Um, institution ministries, ministers, yes, are policy making um, officers, if I may use the term, public officers. Yeah. They don't, do not get involved in operational issues. Yes. And if you do have operational challenges, then you have to set into place the proper mechanism, yes. the proper procedures for addressing those challenges. And um, really, for ministers to be signatories to accounts for any, for any purpose, that is relating to organization of any event, however national, uh, Mr. Njai, in my own reckoning, doesn't look proper. I'd like your reaction to that. I, I always say that in anything that we do in, in, in government, sometimes to solve a problem, I have already mentioned the, historically what the issues were, and that we have to be innovative to all what we have to make sure that the proper accounting procedure is followed. And that at that time, at that time, I had the, it was brainstormed with, with, during several meetings, and this was agreed. I know exactly where what you're saying, that normally we shouldn't be involved, but this was a national event, the inauguration of the presidency, and that Mr. it was Mr. deemed necessary for the ministers to be involved. Mr. Jai, I don't think it's even normally, I think constitutionally, as ministers of state, you are not supposed to get involved in operating bank accounts for any event. So um, if you are going to do that, it has to be based on some legal procedure that exists and against which your actions can be judged and against which you can be held accountable. Don't you think so? I think so. The bottom line is as long as, for me, as long as the documentation is proper and you can, it, it was one of activity. There can be traces where the 
for me, the emphasis was the after audit exercise. Where not the, not the policy, not the policy or the legality or the broader governance issues surrounding this action. No, that, that was all part of it. But this is the National Organising Committee chaired by the Vice President. So and therefore, it was, it was all right for ministers to be signatories to the account because I, it was a National Organising Committee chaired by the Vice President. No, I don't think it was all right. The bottom line was that here is a problem we needed to solve that has been recurring year after year where impresses were giving. And, and you don't have and any permanent secretaries, any directors, any people in the Gambia who were capable of organizing national events. Well, for me, of course they are. But under the circumstances, it, it was the vice president that was identified and the committee was set up. Who identified the vice president? Of course, it's the president that identified. Because what I hear you saying, Mr. Njai, really is trying to justify an action that I consider to be outside of, really, the governance, the proper governance environment based on our constitutional system that um, ought to have applied. I can understand you saying, well, at the time, this is what you were required to do, and you did it. But to say because, you know, no. okay, I, I what are you saying? That, that, that cannot be justified to say that for us to be doing that, no. I said it was, on the, on, it, it, it was due to certain circumstances. That's why this, this, the, the, the ministers has to be involved. Okay. But you agree? But, but you I, agree I, I, I have no, I, I do not agree with the fact that it was not the normal conventional justification to, to, to do it. No, I did not I did not justify it. That cannot be justified. You agree it was not proper? It was not proper. That's All right. All right. I'd, I'll have to ask you to come back after we receive all the transaction documentations in relation to this account. Um, because um, we, we don't have all of them yet. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I don't... I, I don't have any further questions for Mr. Njai today. Mr. Njai, just a quick one. In terms of the circumstances that you cited, how, how were ministers or political appointees or even civil servants, how were they supposed to contribute towards building strong institutions? If personal requests were honored, even if they come from somebody who doesn't have the requisite knowledge or experience in doing something, asking to be a signatory when it's totally unnecessary because the people under you can do it, you know, be you president or minister, what was the choice of being a signatory? Was it for just control? Was it a lack of confidence in the people below you? We just want to understand. Me as a signatory? No, no. no. You or the former head of state, mm -hmm. what was the choice of choosing, you know, the choice of ask, asking to be a signatory to an account? Was it because there was a motivation to conduct something better than the people below you? or there was a lack of confidence in the people who should have done it. For example, the accounting officer as the PS could have done, done it and there wouldn't be any difference. So we just want you to help us understand. At that point where those choices were being made, what was the thinking? Thank you. I think, as I said before, when I reflected on the issue of the grant. This is a bilateral from state to state, and that's where the Minister of Finance will come in. That was the, among other things, the logical reasons why whatever grant that was going to come in, my impression was that it will be like a, a, a legal document that will be sent from the state of Qatar, and then I will be the signatory, and then the normal process will follow. But in the end, I realized that the communication was not actually coming from the state of Qatar to us. 
it was from the state of Qatar to the presidency. And I think that's what happened with the signatory. Coming to the Ministry of Finance to ask us for a signatory, in particular the ministry, I thought at that time that it will not be fair for me to, I have extreme confidence with my officials. I said, whatever happens, let me be in the front line as a minister. I cannot subject my permanent secretary to be a counter signator to the presidency. But one strategy that I made sure that happened is that when I was becoming signatory, I called the Secretary General, we had a meeting, I said, yes, I have no problem, but the bottom line is, I will have to tell the President about the signatory issue. And yes, I did. But for him, it was like a personal request. So I said, as a strategy now, it's a done deal. You cannot cry over spoiled meal, spoiled meal. Now, let me use the Director of Treasury just to make sure that the proper checks and balances are in place. That was how I went to the Director of Treasury to ensure that the proper opening of the account. But there was no way to indicate that we lack confidence with the people as a Ministry of Finance. I had a lot of confidence in my permanent sector. That was the first example. What about the example where three ministers were signatories when they had palm sex? Who could do it? Well, that one, I, 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 as I said, it was on the... It, it, no, nobody will justify that it was proper. No, it was not proper. There was also another trend where uh -huh. people below the president's office were signatories, and then a change of signatory request was made. All of these people cancelled them, and the president is now the only signatory. So at that point, again, was it because of lack of confidence in the way the account was conducted? Was there a breach? We just want to understand what motivates that sort of change. From the president. From the presidency, jumping the accountant general, minister of finance, to the central bank. And even after that request was made, transactions were conducted without that sole signatory even signing. I'm sorry, that one I cannot answer. You are a seasoned administrator. We just want you to help us with the mindset of what happened. Or is that something you don't understand? No, I cannot understand. I'll confess. Fair enough. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. There's, there's just one issue I would like Mr. Njai to think about when you, for when you come back. Um, you, you did talk about um, not exposing your permanent secretary in the way that you contemplated might occur if he were to be left with the, maybe the president, I don't know, in terms of being signatory. Yeah. But at the same time, don't you think by actually, um, by the president, let me put it this way, by the president becoming signatory to an account, um, led to uh, the, the fundamental problem that we see, because as president, people would feel that they cannot say no. So that um, even as Minister of Finance, the governor of the central bank may feel that he cannot say no, because the president, Minister of Finance would be regarded as his boss and the president as super boss. And if these people now sign documents, who can turn it down? You know, that, I think, is one of the fundamental issues that um, one can see in the way that you know, matters have evolved in terms of um, really um, the manner in which the yeah. office of the president continue to operate because it turned out that nobody could say no to him. I, I can mean, answer that. Yes. I can answer that. You I can don't answer have to that come back. now or later. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I think here the difference for me personally yes. was that I became a signatory with the confidence and the commitment that whatever expenditure was going to make, I will make sure that it is justified and it is proper. That was, the, that was the logical reason I said, I cannot expose as the head of the ministry if it is time to take the bullet. I think it's the minister who should be in the forefront to take the bullet force. That was the main reason I said, yes, 
no matter what happens, is the finance minister who will be there as the counter signature to make sure that the procedures are followed through the director of treasury. So that one, I don't have to come back for that. As you said, yes, the finance minister is not the boss of the central bank. The central bank is an independent institution operating legally, autonomously. Yes, they live with the, the governor lives with the minister of finance regularly, but the governor of central bank has the authority to turn down a request from the presidency or the ministry of finance. They are not, the finance minister is not the boss of the uh, governor of central bank. Mr. Mr. Njai, with respect, the ministry of finance to a large extent is a ministry that um, supervises what the central bank does. I mean, you can, of course, they No, have, I don't think so, ma'am. Let me, let me just finish. The Minister of Finance has a role in the appointment of the governor, doesn't he? Can recommend. Exactly. Can recommend. Yes, but not necessarily have an influential role in it. It's the presidency that appoints the, the governor of the central bank. Well, I, I suggest you, we'll defer this discussion for okay, when you come back. I suggest you look at the, the law yeah. when you come back. We do, we but do. my point is that there is a good reason why ministers, politicians, are not made signatories to accounts. There are very good reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll leave it at that okay. for when you come back. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have one more witness. Very well. Uh, we are joined to Monday the 25th. Oh, oh sorry. I was, <laughs> I was saying I have one more. One, one more? Witness. Yes. Yeah, but Mr. Mr. Nuha Williams has been waiting. I just have a few questions for him. T ten minutes? So it's about time. Ten minutes, yes, that's fine. Very well, okay. That's fine. You may call. Uh, Mr. Thank Jai, you, thank you, Mr. Jai, you may go. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. Okay. At 12 o'clock would be fine. Okay, thank you. Please call Noha Williams Jame. Jame, we remind you that you're still under oath. Okay. Yeah, you can have a seat. Please sit down. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mr. Jame, you are required to be here at 10 a.m. today. Uh, I apologize for being late, ma. I was caught by the traffic, ma. Um, Mr. Jame, <clears throat> where Exactly, is the office of uh, General Sol Baji, Suleiman Baji, situate at, um, in Banjul? Uh, at the entrance of the State House. At the, the entrance. At the entrance. Yes, ma'am. Before the gate or after the, uh, the gate? Uh, well, after the barrier. I guess you know where the barrier is. Where, no, where prob the, probably not. Where is the barrier? Uh, where the security used to stand. That is what I mean, the barrier. Okay. Is there an office there? Office building? Yes, that's, his, that's where his office is situated. What is that office called? Uh, it's, it's 
commonly known as General Baji's office. General Baji was head of, uh, what, was his, what was his position at the State House? Uh, he was the Commander RNG. Commander RNG. RNG. What, is, what is RNG? Republican, Republic National Guard. So when you collected the monies from Central Bank, where did you, what, where, uh, where did you put them? What did you use to carry the money? I mean, sometimes you took $21 million, which yep. is, yes. Where did you put it? Uh, it was in bags, bags sort of, bags, I repeat. Bags? Yep. Who gave you those bags? Did you take them with you, or you were given those bags by the central bank? Uh, there are in instances that uh, I get bags from the central bank, yeah. and equally there are instances we, we go with bags. In, in the event they do not have. In the event they don't have? Yeah. What do you do? We go with bags. Or I go with bags. How do, would you know that they don't have? Say again. How do you know to take bags with you? How do you know? How would you know that when you get to the central bank today, they would not have bags? No, when I, uh, I go there, at times they do complain that, like, uh, we will not return bags. So they, are, they will request that they, they need bags. So in that, we have to go with bags. Did you act as um, General uh, Badge's bodyguard? Say again. Did you act as his bodyguard? Were you his bodyguard? Not at all. Not at all? Yep. Are you related to him? Not at all. I only knew him in the system. Are you related to the ex-president? Yep, I am. How are you related? We are all natives. We are natives. What, what course are you studying, by the way? I'm, I'm studying public admin. You're studying? Public admin. Public admin? Yep, ma. So when I say that, um, are you related to President Jami, I want to know whether you are blood relative or you are relative by marriage, um, not whether you are natives. I believe you and I are natives of the Gambia. No. Oh, oh. Yes. Now, are you related to President Jami? I'll ask the question again. Yes. When I say natives, I mean we are of the same village. That's what I mean by natives. Yeah. Uh, you are from the same village, yep, uh, and this is this is Kanilai. Yep, I am. Are you blood relatives? Uh, yes, we will be blood relatives. Okay. How long did you say you worked with General Baji? Say again, ma. How long did you? Work with General Baji? Um, since 2014. That is when I was posted to SG. 2014? Yep. To 2016? Yep. Now, I'm, sh I'm sure you will realize that um, you alone carried from Central Bank to General Baji about $250 million. Now, that's a lot of money. Did you realize that? In, dollar, in dollars and in dollars. Did, did you realize that? I did, I did not take an account of the total sum of money. But I'm sure you realize you took a lot of money to General Very well, ma'am. Did you, did you at, um, after you gave him the money, at any time, because these are large sums of money, yes, did you at any time thereafter see him take those bags and go to the office of the president? Repeat text. Say again, Ma. Now, you said his office is located at the entrance. Yep. Before, after the barriers, but before the gate. Yep. Now, um, could you say yes, if you don't mind? Yes, yes Ma. Yes is more polite. Yes, thank you. With you, with you respect, Ma. Yes, Ma. All right, thank you. Now, you, you took here, you had took bags of money to General Baji. This must be quite heavy, 21 million. I can't even imagine myself. My question is, did you at any time see General Baji move those bags, take them with him to go into State House to meet the President? Uh, as I stated yesterday, Ma, whenever I collect the money, I take it to his office. And 
the deal is over as far as my, my part is concerned. But my question is a simple one. Yep. You are the commander of the military police. I am. And I understand your station is at the gate. Yep. Yes, ma'am. My question is, did you ever see General Baji? Because you remember, you signed documents saying these monies were meant for the president. Yes, ma'am. I just want to confirm whether you ever saw General Baji take those bags to the president, the bags that you gave him. Do you recollect seeing him take those bags and go inside the state house? Whether I have seen him yes. collect those bags and take them to the state house? Yes. Uh, I, can, I can recall, but maybe uh, I might not be able to state when it, it happened. I understand, but do you, was there an, an occasion once, twice, when you saw him actually take those bags to the office of the president? Yep, ma'am. Was once, twice, how many times? Uh, I repeat, I cannot recall the times, ma'am. You cannot recall the times? Yep. Are you studying at the university? I am currently, ma. Studying at the university. Yes, Which year? Second year, ma. Um, I'll just have one last question, well, maybe depending on your answer. Now, did it bother you that 200, about over 200 million, even if you didn't count, the amount of monies you took from Central Bank, you know, could have, is, is more than the budget of many of the ministries put together in, in one year. Did it ever occur to you that this might be money that could be used for national development, this being a poor country? Did it ever cross your mind? What is this money for? This so much money being given to one man. Did it cross your mind at all, Mr. Jamil? To be frank, I do not question my mind as to what the money is meant for. But to me, from my perspective, I felt the, the, the money is meant for national development. How, how, how it goes about doing it, I do not know. Ma. All right. That's all for Mr. Jam. I have one question. For national development, there are appointed officials. So if you had no doubt that the money was meant for national development, did you ever wonder why it had to go through the state house in bags? Will you go through your question again? You just mentioned you believed the money was for national development. Yeah. But in our structure, there are institutions for national development, officials appointed for national development. Yes, sir. So the question is, did it ever cross your mind that for national development, it really should not be going through the state house via top military aid or via the president personally? Because there is a role that you played bringing the money home. Yep. So in that process, and it's okay to believe that it's for national development. You don't have to account for that. Yes, what we are asking is for national development and their institutions to execute. Did it really have to go through the state house via his top military aid and finally to the president? I might not be able to give you at this juncture the breakdown as to how the money is going to be spent on national development. Okay. That's, that's not my question. Yep. I'm asking transporting or escorting money yep. to the top military aid of the president and final delivery of cash to the president. Is that a way to contribute positively to national development? This is now purely economics and public policy management, yeah. yes. which you are studying. Yeah, as you rightly stated that you are a banker, uh, to me, 
uh, you have maybe you have based on your uh, you being a specialist in that area uh, you will be in a better person to guide and counsel me on you know uh, this economic terms that you are using but I for one do not have much knowledge on economic terms as rightly stated so if you come down to my level maybe I'll, I'll, I'll be on, on board with you the answer is yes or no do you believe or do you not believe that taking money to the state house via the top military aid of the president for final delivery to the president is a way to contribute positively to national development yes or no I do not have an answer to that. Um, Mr. Jamie, just one question. Maybe you can enlighten me. Um, I know, based on the evidence given so far, you did over 21 transactions. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he did about, about, about 20. 21 transactions from the central bank and um, vast amounts, 21 million thousands of dollars and euros, etc. I'm just intrigued. Um, as your role as the head, you said commander of military police. Yes, you were spending so much time at the central bank collecting money. How were you able to do your main function, security function? Uh, um, uh, central bank to state house is just a stone throw. My task, as I stated yesterday, is once I received the instructions from General Budget that I should go to Central Bank and collect the money, equally the governor will call me prior to me going. So once I receive the call from the governor, I have to respond to the call. And then, you know, when I get to his office, he has to do all the, the monitored transactions. And that's it. Once the sum of money is given to me that I should escort to the State House, my task is to make sure that the, the, the money is transported from uh, governor's office or from Central Bank to General Budget's office safely. That's, that's, and that's the deal. So you consider this to be part of security matters? Yeah, not, not uh, escort is, is one of my functions. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we just one question. Uh, you said you believe the money was meant for national development. Do you maintain that? I said from my perspective. From your perspective? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, was that perspective based on your heart or on your head? Uh, I guess the head coordinates. Okay. On your head. You see? <coughs> If it is based, or if it was based on your head, then it had to be rational. So, what are the reasons for your belief that this huge amount of money given to General Biden unconventionally was meant for national development? I don't think that's difficult English, but let's break it down. On what reasons do you base this idea of national development? Um, to me, I, I felt uh, that question, uh, the guy who can, you know, hmm? give an accurate or appreciative answer to it would be uh, a general budget, sir. Did you, did you hear that? Yes. Did that? The guy who has to give an answer is general budget. No, but you said your idea was based on your brains. That is on reasons rather than your heart where you can simply feel. So then it was based on your heart and not on your head. When 
you said you believe that the amount was meant for national development. Is that not correct? You can't have it both ways. It is either rational based on the head or irrational based on the heart. Yep. So what can you tell us? I repeat, uh, rational, sir, but I think General Baji has a better stand to answer that question, sir. That will be all. We will. Just one question. Yes, Can you give us the names of the drivers that escorted you when you went to Central Bank? Um, his driver was... The, the, the drivers that went with me? Sorry? The driver that went with me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was it... Was, okay, go ahead. He's currently not, not, not here. Okay, what's his name? Is Sergeant B.I. Sergeant? B.I. Can you spell it? B-E-Y-A-I. B-E-Y? B-E-Y. A-I. A-I. B-I. B -I. Yep. First name? Actually, no. The name, the name is, is a problem. You can't remember. Yeah. Was the only one who escorted you on all the occasions? Yep. Was he the, your driver in your military wing or the General Badge's driver? Uh, he's... He's one of his drivers. He's, he's, one of General Badge's drivers. Yeah. All right. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Very well. We'll adjourn to Monday, the 25th of September at 10 o'clock.